Well, Brendan, I was at that graduate ceremony that kicked off at 10 at the Convocation Center. Normally from our station, that would take you about 10 minutes to get there. But today, because of all the traffic, it took me closer to 45 minutes. This is one of the pieces of paper that people can fill out here at the Department of Social Services to apply for the cooling assistance program. Gloria and John, this site says it all. This is an intersection here in Stanley that has been taken over by water because of all the flooding. As we get set for the commencement ceremonies, I want to walk you around the uh, stadium right now. Yet another snowstorm has hit the valley, and right now a state of emergency, as we said, is in effect. Just because of someone throwing a cigarette in this stuff, there was hundreds of thousands of dollars in damages. This is a real thing. It's from J&D's Foods. They sent this to us this week. It's a bacon-scented pillowcase. Any photo ID you have, whether it's a driver's license, a passport, or a work ID, for example. Brendan, this is the mugshot of Horowitz when he was booked back in jail in May. Korean food, I'm sure a lot of people out there have had Chinese food and Japanese food. What separates Korean food from all of that? Make sure to call that number. Canada looking for a home this afternoon. Brendan, this camera that you see me holding right here is one of the cameras that was used by a Japanese photographer to document the Pearl Harbor bombings in the 1940s. Very early in the morning this past Sunday, he walked out to check on his motorcycles at the end of his driveway right there. One of them was missing. Our fourth stop for Valley Food Challenges brings us over the mountain to Lou Ray, where Dan's Steakhouse greets visitors as they head into town. As the name suggests, the restaurant is known for its steak. Christy Baker, who's the owner of Dan's, says they don't mess around when it comes to red meat. For today's challenge, I'm having a dish fit for a king, or maybe two of them. Today, I'm going up against a steak weighing 72 ounces. But that's not all. I mean, is this just, we're just playing for bragging rights, so I would have imagined. Not gonna win. <laughs> not gonna win. Coming from the, the, coming from the woman herself I'm saying gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna win. Have the bragging rights on the side of the mountain. Game on. But before we could begin, I had to get a sense of what a 72 ounce steak looked like. <laughs> oh my goodness. Woo! Oh, woo! This is the steak. This is, my goodness, I'm gonna have to get this all in here. I placed my order a medium rare steak and applesauce, coleslaw, a salad, and a baked potato as my four sides. Now, it was time to eat. Oh, <laughs> One oh, hour, so start the clock. My strategy in the early going was to eat as much of the steak. Wow, that was a good steak. Within 10 minutes, I had made a dent. Now it was time to dig into the sides. First up, the applesauce. Mmm. The coolness of it was perfect after the steak. All it took me was about 30 seconds to polish it off, but it was time to do some damage to the steak. I made progress, bite by bite, but there was still plenty of steak left. After another 10 minutes, it was time to eat the coleslaw. Let's incorporate you a little bit, Pepper. I wolfed it down. Soon enough, I was finished. Two sides done. Mm. But still, I had a whole lot of steak left. I was approaching halfway, both in the challenge and on the steak. The steak, it's not even looking any smaller. And we're already 32 minutes into this thing, it's not even looking any smaller. Over and over again, I took a bite. The steak still tasted good, but I was filling up quickly. Instead, I took aim at the salad. The coolness of it provided relief. 15 minutes to go, and I am really struggling. I can barely keep my head up. Oh, I can't even eat steak. I was truly sick at this point. Some of the staff and customers didn't stop believing, though. Does that feel good? 10 minutes to go, but I couldn't eat anymore. Time ticked away slowly, and soon enough, it was all over. A peaceful sound, a beautiful sight, 
It is 13 years to the day when fear and tragedy touched the hearts of Americans. 184 markers for each victim at the Pentagon. The number could be higher if it wasn't for people like Lieutenant Maderos. I will always remember 9-11. I was here that day. I was here for two weeks straight after that, uh, still trying to pick up the mess that occurred. Well, I'll never forget. Never forget that day for the rest of my life. It is a day to remember not only the lives that were lost, but also a day to remember those who made a difference. 13th anniversary, you know, you always hear about the big anniversaries, the first anniversary, the fifth anniversary, the 10th anniversary. This is the 13th. And coming from, I would like to hear from from you. Do you ever think that the memory of 9-11 is fading away at all? People cannot forget because they'll wait. The terrorists will wait. The threat is there. Hopefully people will never forget about that incident, not only here in New York and in Pennsylvania. The thing is that uh, over 3,000, 4,000 people lost their lives that day. So you got to remember, never forget. For one man who did so much on 9-11, there is one last thing to do. One of the points of this whole story is not only to hear accounts of this uh, here on the anniversary, but also to say thank you. You obviously played a very big role in all of this. And when we stopped by the Stanton Fire Department, they told me to give this to you. We wanted to show this, so the Stanton Fire Department there in Stanton saying thank you for all you did on 9-11 and keeping everything safe and coordinating everything here on the 13th anniversary. People in the Valley, I think I speak for all of them, we say thank you to you. Thank you. On the 13th anniversary of 9-11 today, the Valley thanks each and every one of the heroes from that day, like Lieutenant Maderos. It's a common belief that if you go to college and graduate, you'll be better off than someone who does not go to college. But studies are showing more and more now that may not be the case. First, consider the cost. Many of us know how expensive college can be, and many students are learning it's tough to graduate in four years. According to a study done at UCLA, 9 out of 10 freshmen think they'll get a degree in four years, but fewer than half actually will. Research from the U.S. Department of Education states that around 45% of those freshmen haven't even finished after six years. And get this, the average cost of one extra year at a four-year public university is more than $60,000. Getting your degree can be costly. Just ask Josh Floyd, who's a graduate student at JMU. Yeah, that much longer before you're getting hired with a full-time paid position. So, I mean, your interest on the loans that you've had for undergrad are going to accrue that much more while you're doing that fifth year. Josh is 23 years old and currently studying to become a teacher. Because of the cost of having to go to school, Josh has had to get a side job. It's not just money that he's sacrificing, but also time. I don't have that time to get everything done. I mean, it's pretty much like I'm paying to do a job. One option that is leading to lots of success nowadays are technical schools. Three are right here in the valley, including the Massanutten Technical Center. Kevin Hutton is the assistant director at MTC. He says high schoolers can learn skills in a number of different trades. Some of the programs that we offer are everything from collision repair, welding, heating and air, visual arts and 3D animation, computer repair. Most of the programs are in high demand fields, meaning once a student gets their license at MTC and graduates from high school, they can get a high paying job. What we are doing here is we are preparing those students so they are ready and they can go out into the workforce and find the job that they need. The students choosing this path have skyrocketed. At MTC alone in 2001, 348 students were enrolled. 14 years later, that number has almost tripled. One of the students there now is John Liguori. He's 19 and working to get a license in architecture and interior design. It's just something I've wanted to do for a few years now. John graduates from Harrisonburg High School in June, and he has a good idea of what his next step will be. Hopefully I'm going full time with the engineering company. The things he's learning now are giving him a leg up on a career. And these are your plans that you have right here. Walk me through it. Yeah. What do we have? This is a house that we build all the classes here, and then we end up auctioning it off at the end of the year, kind of a fundraiser for the whole school. These plans were made by our class, and then they have construction, carpentry, electricity, and stuff. Go in there and build a house. So this is the finished product that we're seeing right here, all that work that went into this house right here. Uh, it's almost finished. We work on it throughout the year. 
How is it, I mean, standing in a place that you yourself put a direct role in putting up? I mean, that's got to be a pretty cool feeling. I would yeah, imagine. I mean, it's pretty cool. A team of high schoolers building their skills and their future. Now, what's your future plans, your dream? Right now, I'll just stick to what I'm doing. This, it's given me a lot of opportunities. Opportunities for success changing from this to this. In Harrisonburg, Tom Dempsey, WHSV.